Okay. It looks like we are live. How is everyone doing today? Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe Creative Cloud, focusing on digital video and audio. And for today's live stream, uh, we're going to be talking about um, one of my favorite mobile apps, Adobe Capture CC, available for iOS and Android, and um, a new module or a reimagined module that has come back to it called Looks, which is going to allow you to capture the color and light <clears throat> from an image that you have on your mobile device or while you're out and about. You're, you're at a beautiful sunset somewhere on the beach, you're on a beautiful cloudy day, and you want to just capture that look, and you can do that real easily. I'm going to show you how to do that and then how to apply that to your video inside of After Effects, Premiere Pro, or even stills inside of Photoshop. So a quick round of hellos for everyone joining us on uh, Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, and YouTube. Ali Khan, Sheik, Claudia from Romania, Bernard, how you doing from Cincinnati? Armand, how are you? Carol Silverman, Alfs Kamara, hi, Mozaga, yo, David Bazulta, what's up? Hey, Dave, I'm going to see you at NAB. Keith Owen, what's happening? Gabrielle. Jucolo, a big chow from your little, uh, very nice. <laughs> Stephen Klein, Ron L. Torres, what's up? Magnus from Sweden, great to see you. Chris Oates, all right. <laughs> Tune for heaven. When, when you are bored, Jason is streaming again. Yes, lots of streaming. Desiree, how are you? And let's see, here. bouncing over to the YouTubes. Let's see, we've got Pierre Julien, hello. Bobby World, Sass Front, and Adib Krishna, hello. Okay. So I want to dive right in because this uh, quick tutorial is likely to become embedded in a blog post that some of you may have seen um, from the Adobe blogs just um, issued last week to announce the new module coming back to Adobe Capture looks. So what's going to happen here is let me just go ahead. I've got to reconfig my, um, my screen here. Hopefully Periscope doesn't drop. I don't think it will. Uh, so I'm very quickly going to launch. Adobe Capture. So let me go ahead and do that. And we'll switch my screen over here. All right, like this. Okay. And I am inside Adobe Capture. Now, again, at, at present, it's using the camera. So you can see it's filming my filming my screen in front of me. You're getting this nice, nice echo <laughs> as it does that. Um, Want to point out again that, of course, you have all these other modules inside of Capture, including materials, Type, which is one of the greatest things ever. Again, this allows you to look at a font, snap a photo of it. It'll automatically find a similar font, if not the exact same font, in Adobe Fonts. And then if you want that, it'll synchronize it to your CC libraries. So cool. Uh, shapes, again, for vectorizing anything, creating vectors. This is amazing. Also one of my favorites. Colors. Um, you can figure this out. Creating color swatches for Photoshop and Illustrator. And then we've got patterns which is just also so cool. If you want to create patterns, look at this, how effortless this is just to create super cool patterns. Brushes as well. Uh, if any of you, um, you know, are inspired by Kyle Webster's brushes, you can make your own right here inside of Adobe Capture. But we're going to focus on looks. And again, the idea here is being able to create the actual look, the color and light from a time and place, and then create a LUT which you can then use inside of Premiere, After Effects, or even Photoshop. Now you can do this with a camera. I'm inside, so while it's pretty and there's cool stuff to see in here, oh, there's like, there's me, Zzz, all right? <laughs> um, we're not gonna create sort of a look of the studio here, although I have some that I already created. So at the bottom right, you'll see that you have the option, of course, to bring in photos from a number of different destinations, including your camera roll, obviously, images that you may have stored in Creative Cloud, Lightroom, Adobe Stock, or the file system, in this case, on the, um, on the iPhone. So I'm going to go to Lightroom, where, of course, I have all of my stored images. And we're pulling up here some of the recent images that I shot. I told you yesterday on the stream, I've been working on this video documentary for a long time about San Francisco skylines. Um, these are some of the stills that I took as well. And perhaps from one of these stills, I want to create a look or a LUT. And this is what I love about San Francisco. These are on different days even, but you can just see from the same vantage point just how vastly different all these skies are. 
So taking a look here, I think I really like this one kind of in the bottom right. So maybe we'll choose this, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and select this image. All right, it's an HDR DNG shot, by the way, inside with the Lightroom camera. So if you're gonna be shooting on your iPhone, of course, you have lots of options. If you're already a CC member, use the Lightroom camera. It's gonna shoot DNG for once. So you'll actually have raw images from your iPhone. And if you're working with difficult lighting, um, HDR shot inside of the Lightroom camera just produces am really amazing results, you know, without even having to bracket or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this, we'll open it. And now this brings it into capture. Now, at this point, we could sort of be done. We could say, yep, that's the look I want. Let's create a LUT from that. What's really cool is that in this reimagined version, you have um, a couple of additional options for treating the image before you create the look, before you create the LUT. So up at the top here, you'll see that you have this uh, settings, uh, uh, color settings um, button up the top center here. And when I click on, when I tap on that, always say click, we're on a mobile device. When we tap there, now you'll see that you have the ability to adjust. If you look at the bottom here, I can even zoom in a little on here so you can see it a little bit better. All right. So you've got options for exposure, highlight, shadow, saturation, contrast, hue, and brightness. Again, all in an effort to allow you to, even by the way, even if you're in the live camera, you have these options so that you can tweak the image here of whatever, the, of whatever image you're, you're working with before you build the LUT. So, um, you know, this, this actually looks pretty good. I sort of like this. Maybe I wanna just adjust or roll back the highlights just a little bit more, just to create a little bit more sort of drama in the look. And as I do that, you'll see, you can see the sort of color swatch up above that it's building. These are the primary hues in the image. You can see how those are dynamically adjusting. So I don't wanna to go too extreme because then we start to just get sort of noisy and it's artificially creating things that just weren't really there. Just kind of back them off a little bit. Maybe at the same time, I'll um, increase some of the shadow detail. Now that's too much. So again, can kind of back this off just to kind of get it a little bit darker, but at the same time, bringing out some of the shadow detail in there. And we can scroll through the different modules. You can enable them or disable them. It will remember your settings. This is beautiful. So again, you're further tweaking that time and day, time of, uh, time of day look before you begin creating the actual LUT, all right? So once we have it the way we want, let's go ahead and uh, tap the check mark here. Now, by nature, we have two examples that you can test your look on before you actually build it. So right now we're seeing it, and at the bottom of Capture, you can see that we have a whole series of the primary hues. So these are the hues that you actually see. Hold on, where's my finger? There it is. So up above there, Right at the top of capture, we can see all the different hues that it extracted from the image. So that's what's being um, referenced down below. All you have to do is choose the primary hue that you want to effectively be the part of that look, all right? So as I scroll through these, this is kind of showing you how these different hues change. I happen to really like this one. If I hold my finger down on the screen and tap, now we're seeing the before look Right before the looks applied, let go. This is the after. Before, after. If we go to like that slightly more greenish hue, primary hue, all right? That to me isn't really representative of what the light looked like there. Here's another one, sort of a darker brown. All right, that just kind of gives us a nice little skin tone warm up. I happen to think I really like this one. This kind of respects that, that uh, sunrise feeling, all right? and just kind of gives it a really nice look. If I swipe left here, you'll see that there's also a video that's already in capture. So again, allowing you to test this on video. Hold it down, before, all right? Release, after, okay? Before, after. You also have an intensity slider just below your reference video. So we can increase the intensity here, all right? probably a bit much, don't wanna really go too much on this, before, after. But of course, what if I just wanna see it on my own footage? I don't care, I don't care about this, I wanna see what it's gonna look like on my stuff. Swipe left again, now you have the option here to upload a preview image or video. So if we go ahead and tap the plus sign here, I'll go into videos, 
And let's go ahead and choose one like this, okay? So go ahead and choose this. Again, you can play it in here if you so desire. It's gonna quickly compress the video, all right? And now we can see what that looks like. It plays it back for us. I can tap before, after, right? And that looks really super cool, all right? Again, we can start messing about with the other hues. This one, it's a little too warm. Now we could back off the intensity and change that ever so slightly. But I, I think this I think this second one, this is sort of taupe brown is really, that's really doing it for me. It really feels, feels like it. Now this one isn't bad either. Here's a before, after. It's got sort of a combination of cool and warm. But I really think I like this one as my primary hue. So if we're happy with that, let's go ahead and save it. So I'm gonna tap on save. And when I do, now this is where this gets so cool because this is going to allow you to save it to your CC libraries. And the key there is, as I've always said, is that if you save it to CC libraries, it will be on your desktop whenever you get back to work, right? So you're in Premiere, you're in After Effects, you're in Photoshop, you will have access to this look immediately and it automatically synchronizes there. So the first thing is you wanna choose the library where you want to store it. Jason's library is the one that I typically place most of my assets. You can see some of my shared libraries here. I've got over 299 assets in Jason's library. So let's go ahead and stick it there. And at the same time, I'm gonna give this a new name and we'll call this SF Sunrise Mar for March, okay? Just keep, keep the name somewhat short. Click done on that and click save. Okay, and our look is now saved. Now, one other thing I wanna point out here, let me just exit out of here for a second. So now you can see this is showing you all of the various look assets that I have in Jason's library. And as promised, as I just mentioned, you see the two Studio Int, my finger keeps getting lost here, Studio Int, two and one down here, these up here on screen. I actually shot those in the studio. Those will apply, again, that kind of a look. There's so much colored light in here that <laughs> if you're going for a very stylized in the club feeling, actually, I was talking about one of my favorite web series today. That's my DJ. Those would probably be quite applicable if I shot stuff like in a club and wanted to go for that kind of color vibe, uh, that sort of, you know, like strobe and, and, and black light and all those things that you see. Could be super cool. Here, we're just kind of affecting natural environments. So those might not be it, but you can also see at the top here, I have SF Sunrise. I've also got some desert shots and other ones in here. And I wanna just quickly go to the preferences because there's an option here, which I believe is enabled by default called Enable Quick Save. I'm circling it on screen here. When that's on, it just automatically saves it to whatever the last library that you referenced in Capture, and it'll use a default name, i.e., LUT 10 or whatever, however many you have, it'll just numerically keep increasing. So I have that disabled because I like to be able to one, choose the library where it's going and rename it. You don't have to, it doesn't actually matter because you can always tap on the little three dots here, the little ellipsis here, and I can rename it right in here as well. Okay, so really easy to do that after the fact. If you forget, just pointing out that if you want to have the options, like if you download this right now and it automatically saves it and you don't get to name it, that's why. You can change that in the preferences. So now that it's here, let's actually apply this to some footage in uh, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Photoshop. So very quickly, let's go ahead. I'm gonna get out of quick time here. All right, and let me just give me a moment and make sure that uh, Periscope is still running. Looks like it is, awesome, so cool. And let's go ahead and start in Premiere. All right, is my UI still? Okay, yeah, good, I'm still framed properly. All right, so here we are in looks, in our CC libraries, right up here, you can see them. You can see all the same looks. SF Sunrise Mar, there's the one we just created. Right, here's some of the others that you saw. Here's my studio ones that I was just talking about. And here I've got some footage. Now this is, again, additional footage from that same vantage point, different time, different day. All right, just play that back real quickly. Nothing fancy. Again, a lot of this I've been kind of compiling for future, um, future Adobe stock use. But let's go ahead and apply it. How do you do it? Well, it's as simple as dragging and dropping. So I can take this SF Sunrise March drag it right over top of the clip, and instantly it applies that same kind of look. Now granted, this was midday, super sunny blue sky. 
So the elements, of course, are a little different. But if you look at the before and after, let's go into the Lumetri panel, you'll notice that when you drag and drop that LUT that you just made, it actually applies it as a look in the creative section of Lumetri, all right? So it takes it from the CC libraries and it applies it here. This is, of course, where you have all of the preset um, looks and LUTs that we give you inside of the Lumetri panel, also fully accessible in After Effects, right? So here it is right there. Again, if we disable before, after, play this back, and it really has that same kind of feeling. Now, obviously, again, it's a completely different time of day, but just to look at the original and after, yes, that's that, that same light, that same kind of sun that I remember, it feels the same. And if we really wanted to kind of sell it even more, we could obviously do some vignetting, we could do, you know, um, a little sort of gradient in the sky to just sort of gradually darken it over time and really sell the idea that this is closer to sunrise, okay? Doesn't matter, you get the idea. Very quickly, very easily, drag and drop from CC libraries right to your footage. Let me just try, let's do another example, one that's a little bit different. Okay, so this was something I've shown before, shot at the SF, uh, what are these called? The SF baths, uh, very famous area here on the beach. So again, let's take our sunrise. Again, this is a super cloudy day, right? Overcast, this was done in the, in the uh, yeah, I wanna say like early fall. Drop it on there, ooh, right? Same thing, before, after. And it just creates that same look, that same kind of light. Let's bounce over to After Effects, okay? So here's a shot that I did in my desert here. Uh, this was in the springtime. And you can see it's sort of very dark and there's some various hues kind of in the background there. Let's take our same SF Sunrise, again, accessible via Jason's library under Looks in CC Libraries, and just drag it on top of our clip. Same thing, and it gets applied as your color LUT. Now that's one slight difference here, as you'll see, when you drag it directly uh, from CC Libraries and After Effects, it uses the Apply Color LUT effect and chooses it that way, all right? Very simply. But if you take a look at this footage now, um, I mean, it's it's really cool. Like, here's the before, okay? You can see I've got a little rack focus going on there. And then here's the after. And it just, it really, it really captures that, that San Francisco sunrise. I mean, you could see the reference here. It just really feels familiar. And then, of course, we could do additional tweaking on there um, via the Lumetri panel. All right, let's go over to Photoshop, same thing, right? You shoot these LUTs, you want to apply them. Here's a shot, I did this in Amsterdam, and I wanted to apply that same kind of, just that slightly different San Francisco sunrise sky. It's just very different hues in SF compared to Amsterdam at different times. And of course, here you can see this was a rainy day, very cloudy, but very blue sky, very deep, dark blue. So let's go over to libraries where once again, inside of Photoshop, of course, I see all these other things available to me. Color themes, character styles, brushes, graphics, patterns. We're looking for looks. And just as you saw consistently across the board, here's all the various looks. Let's take SF Sunrise. I'm gonna right click here and choose apply look. And similar to the way that it does in an After Effects, when we do that, oh, look at that. It just really brings out that, that, uh, that just that beautiful golden sun. I mean, it just, wow, you know, instantly. And what you'll see is that it actually does it via the color lookup um, uh, option, which is actually an adjustment layer option here. Okay, so if we scroll over here, I'm just gonna try and show you up here in the top. All right, it's this option right here, color lookup adjustment layer. So you apply them via an adjustment layer. It's again, beautifully, easily, non-destructive, all right? And of course, you have additional options here as well. Oh, not, not your layer style. So um, really simple, really easy to apply these in Photoshop. I love this effect. I love the ability that you have to just shoot and capture that look real quickly and then apply it to stills or videos. Um, again, if you double click on the color lookup adjustment layer here, this also um, allows you, you can see how it's applied the 3D LUT file, which by the way, if you noticed um, on After Effects, it's a .cube file, which means that you can use this outside of Premiere and After Effects and Photoshop as well, standard .cube. So any application grading app that reads .cube files, you can use these LUTs.
Real simple, okay? And then again, if we were to click here, you can load additional LUTs from here, um, any .looks, .cube, .3dl. These are, this is a subset of uh, the ones that we have in Premiere and After Effects via the Lumetri panel, okay? Really simple, really easy to use. I absolutely love this. If you haven't downloaded Adobe Capture, you need to do this today. It's super fun. Again, and there's so many cool modules to use. This one people have been asking for to return. We had it a couple years ago, went away for a while. Now it's back, more powerful, better than ever. All those manual options that we talked about. And I sincerely love, just absolutely love this mobile app. All right, so let's bounce over to the chat for a couple questions. And then I will send you on your way. Let's see, all right, we got Dan and Thomas. How are you, Chris Oates? Okay, Beaufort, Ronell, Carlos, Jersey, Hossem, Claudio Sandalo, Ciao, Nicolas, Fred Rock. I'm seeing lots of lovely hellos. Tuana from Kurdistan, Grace from UAE, Renee from Dayton, Ohio, Burns, Andres, Brett, Bruno. Awais, am I? Thank you, I'm great. Fernando, what's up? Amy. Oh, great info on syncing and creating patterns. Oh yeah, the pattern creation stuff is amazing, Amy. It's so cool. Stephanie Reed, always great to see you. Stephanie Reed just posted a new Tech Tuesday tu of tutorials. Very nice on After Effects. Awesome. Avi Rupp, how are you? Khaled, great to see you. Chan, all right. Nero Fresti. Oh, you love watching the videos. Gave us some great new ideas. Ah, oh, well, that's really awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, that's why we do it. Justin from North Carolina. What camera am I using for the live stream? It's a Nikon D800. All right. Tune Verhoeven. Don't like mobile phones, but love this stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Um, you know, sometimes you just see, right? I mean, I see this, I, I, and I photograph that same vantage point. I always stay in the same hotel room, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, or I try and always get the exact same room. That view never gets boring for me because the light always changes and it's just always, I don't know, it's just always exciting. So I love it. I really, really love it. And uh, it's just super cool that you can capture that so easily. All right, Michael. All right. Let's see. All right. Uh, Dana, epic, nice. All right, Thomas is going to go play with Capture, hoping for some happy accidents, nice. Michael Sands, is there any functional difference between applying a LUT to an adjustment layer versus actual footage? No, no functional difference whatsoever. Of course, the benefit of doing it on an adjustment layer uh, is that it'll affect everything below that adjustment layer. So if you're doing sort of a global um, a grade or just a, a global look for everything after you've individually graded shots, that's where I would use it as an adjustment layer. Otherwise, it's only applying it to the selected clip. But yeah, functionally, same, same process. All right, graphic design from Bangladesh. Hello, Luigi F from Greece, howdy. Graphic design, Stratos Ajiani. Export files as cube. Yep, and of course you can export those. Uh, you can save them to different locations and of course you can export them out um, of Premiere Pro as .cube as well, which is really easy. Vincent Beck, what's up? Trollox, hey, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Avijit, yes, this video will stay recorded. You'll be able to watch the replay right here, right everywhere on Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, and on my YouTube channel. All right, CL, Karen, Brisa, hola, and Des, how are you doing? Okay, well, it looks like we got to all the questions. Well, everyone, that's it for the live stream today. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll be back uh, tomorrow, tomorrow or Thursday, um, I believe on the Creative Cloud channel talking about some more cool workflows, basic things, probably stuff that you didn't know about. So until then, have a great rest of your day wherever you are in the world, and we will see you again next time. Thanks again so much for watching. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.